It's the most spookiest time of the year. It's October, guys. You're as excited as I am. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Marissa White, and I would like to be your internet friend. I dropped my notes. So I am very excited because I have some news to share with you guys. I'm going to be starting a new series on this channel that is going to be called Weird Wednesday. So on Wednesdays, we're going to get weird. We're going to cover topics like UFOs, conspiracy theories, mysteries, the paranormal, and anything that's just flat out weird. Anything that makes you sit back and say, what the So. If you're interested in that kind of stuff and you're a little weirdo like me, then you should definitely subscribe and watch my Weird Wednesday videos. But for today's video, I wanted to start this series off with a story that I have been interested in since I was a little, little baby. A small little version of myself. As the title suggests, my first ever Weird Wednesday video is going to be on a real bitch of a witch, the Bell witch. This witch has inspired many movies and different documentaries. Before Paranormal Activity came out and all those films that were shot like documentary style, Blair Witch, they paved the way for that, honey. Do you guys remember the scene in the Blair Witch, if you have seen it, where she's like up close to the camera and she's got like snot just coming out of her nose and she's like, we're in the woods. And there's just snot like dripping onto the camera. You can show me blood. You can show me guts. But show me snot dripping out of someone's nose and ew, I'm disgusted. But anyways, guys. That is a movie that was heavily inspired by The Bell Witch. Also, there's another movie called An American Haunting that is also about The Bell Witch. This case, as far as my knowledge and my research goes, is the first and I believe only case of a death being ruled out supernatural or a murder that was by a freaking ghost, you guys, by an entity. Now, of course, this was, you know, Puritan society, so we have to take that into consideration. But with that being said, let's jump right in to the Bell Witch story. So, this story takes place in 1800 in Adams, Tennessee. John Bell and his family moved to this area and he purchased a very large amount of land 300 acres actually so apparently for the first like 17 years that they lived on this property and in this home everything was good the bells were a well-respected family and people liked them and they had a good life things took a turn for the worst when john bell was one day in his field hunting on his 300 acres that he owned and him and his son saw this very strange wolf dog creature that didn't really necessarily look like a wolf or a dog and they were so freaked out they were like boom shot it killed it and boy did they regret doing that because that is said to be what sparked all of the Bell Witch's bullshit. So after they killed this animal, creature, whatever it was, maybe it was a skinwalker. If you guys know what skinwalkers are, then you know what I'm talking about. But we'll get into that later in another video. Maybe that's what sparked this whole thing, okay? That's part of the theory. So after this animal was killed, the Bells reported hearing weird noises, knocking, banging, whispers, just strange happenings that they weren't really able to debunk or put their finger on. And the Bells being a family in this Puritan society, they didn't want to bring any attention to themselves 
that could make them a target because there was literal witch hunts going on at this time, you guys. I mean, the Salem witch trials were, uh, that was in the 1600s, so that was before this, but still, the witch hunts, they carried out for years and years and years after that. And so people were scared shitless that, you know, they were gonna get called out for being a witch. I mean, if you know anything about the Salem witch trials, you know how crazy that was. Half the time, probably more than half the time, these people weren't even practicing witchcraft or doing anything related to the occult. Someone would steal your boyfriend and they would accuse you of witchcraft and you would get hung or burned at the stake. How dare you, Sarah? You stole my man and now you're gonna pay. And by pay, I mean burn at the stake, bitch. That's literally how it was. So, needless to say, the Bell family was like, our lips are sealed. They were brutal. So, John Bell and his family decided to keep these happenings under wraps as long as they could to avoid anybody being suspicious of them. Eventually, these happenings got worse and worse and more intense and more severe. It got to the point where the Bell family reported being slapped, scratched, abused physically in multiple ways. The daughter, Elizabeth Bell, which in some of the stories and in the movie, An American Haunting, they actually call her Betsy. She really got the brunt of these beatings. In the movie, An American Haunting, there's a scene where this ghost, unseen ghost, invisible, grabs her by her hair. So her hair is literally completely pulled up in the shape of like a triangle and snatched and she just gets flung. They snatched her weave, you guys. And I, honestly, it's not meant to be a funny scene, but I always crack up because it just looks hilarious. It's crazy. But apparently she got snatched up by her hair and was dragged and suspended in the air. And apparently this entity would really target her with all of the physical abuse rip the blankets off of her in the middle of the night and just beat the shit out of her for some reason. So John felt helpless because he couldn't do the one thing that a father was supposed to be able to do for his family and protect them. This entity was defeating all of them. So he did eventually end up asking for help. All of the people that were involved in this story that he reached out to to investigate and just to witness the things that were going on report hearing strange noises and all of the physical abuse, but it even got to the point where this entity basically flat out said, hi, my name is Kate and I'm here to ruin your life. So that's what's so intriguing about this case to me is that this entity that supposedly was named Kate would flat out communicate openly, a disembodied voice, and talk shit to anybody who entered the home, mock them, put them down, scare them, and even Andrew Jackson, you guys, yeah, the, I think he was the seventh president, correct me if I'm wrong, but Andrew Jackson himself visited the home because he heard about this story and wanted to see for himself and was terrified. He said something along the lines of that he would rather face the British army all over again than ever step foot in this home and have another encounter with the Bell Witch again. If you guys know anything about Andrew Jackson, he was a weirdo himself. He would have duels all the time and it seemed to not phase him even when he did one time get shot. He was kind of an asshole and it seemed like he was unscarable, okay? He was a monster himself. And this witch spooked him, scared him, punked him. So all of this torture continued to happen. And again, poor Elizabeth or Betsy endured endless torture. So there's multiple theories as to why this bell witch decided to haunt this family. A few of the theories are that the bell family home was actually built on top of an Indian burial ground. And don't even get me started on Indian burial grounds. Those are places that you don't wanna mess with. 
lots and lots and lots of paranormal activity are known to be happening on Indian burial grounds. So that's another theory. Then there is a theory that there is this cave near the home that is basically a portal to hell or a portal to the supernatural realm where evil spirits, demonic entities, and things of that nature lurk. And that this entity was passing in and out and took a liking to tormenting the Bell family. As far as which legend or story you wanna believe, that's completely up to you. I just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of all the theories that are out there. Now, in the Blair Witch Project, they interview a few of the people in that area or in the area that's said to be haunted by this Blair Witch or Bell Witch. And I did some digging and even though the Blair Witch Project is a fictional film, there are actually some uh, interviews and some documentaries done on people who still live in that area. Adams, Tennessee is now what it is called. And there are people who have claimed to be haunted by this entity or what they believe to be some type of demonic entity that could be coming from that cave or just something that lurks on the land. There is still descendants of the Bell family living on that land to this day that have reported hauntings. One woman that I looked into actually reported being physically possessed by this bell witch or demon or whatever this entity may be. Now, as far as proof goes, we don't have any of you guys. These are just stories. But how crazy is that? That after all this time, people are still reporting issues and hauntings with this bell witch. Going back to the original story of the Bell family, time goes on, all these crazy things are going on, and John is just tormented literally into his death, right? So John eventually dies. They're saying he was literally killed by something supernatural. Apparently, this bell witch which called herself Kate, decided to poison John. So when they came in to investigate his death, there was this poisonous substance or medicine that he was taking and the smell of it was on his breath. So they knew that that's what John had been given. And apparently this entity just flat out was like, yep, I did that, I killed him. What are you gonna do about it? Ha ha, bitches and people were just completely blown away by this and eventually elizabeth did end up getting married and she made some type of a pact with the bell witch to return in seven years which i guess she did and she was able to live out her life and i wouldn't say live happily ever after but the bell witch did eventually leave her alone because she kept her promise to return to the house seven years later. Maybe it was eight years. I think it was seven. But unfortunately for Elizabeth, she had like eight kids and they all died at young ages. She had to watch eight of her children die before she met her own death. And I couldn't imagine how awful it must be to go through something like that. So a lot of people believed that this family was just flat out cursed this got me thinking you guys the wife of john bell she is mentioned in some of these stories but not all of them but in a few of these theories or stories it was reported that she fell ill i believe her name was lucy bell she fell ill and the bell witch or this entity actually took pity on her and took care of her and like nursed her back to health. So then I got to thinking, what if Lucy, okay, follow me here. What if she was a witch? What if she was practicing witchcraft? Maybe her husband was doing something abusive. In the movie, An American Haunting, 
John Bell is sexually abusing his daughter and I won't get too into the movie, but basically the entity is actually her daughter's, the victim's innocence manifested into a poltergeist or some type of force that is torturing John and she is in a sense torturing herself trying to get her to remember what was happening to her because your mind can block things out when you go through trauma. So it is said that this young girl in the movie, Betsy in the Legends, Elizabeth, was going through this abuse by her father. And so that's why all of these things are happening. And if you think about it, if the mom or the wife of John Bell knew about the sexual abuse happening and she was practicing witchcraft, and this entity was friends or friendly with the wife, maybe the wife was the one bringing this on to punish her husband for what he was doing to her daughter and also to try to make her daughter see what was going on or even just resent her father. I don't know, you guys. There's so many theories. I'm curious to know what you guys believe. I'm sure you've heard something about this case if you're interested in the paranormal, but if you haven't, then I hope that this was entertaining for you. And if you have already heard about it, I hope that I brought something new to the table that you might have not already thought about. This case really gets me, you guys. It's a trip. All right, guys, so that's gonna wrap up this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, please, it would mean the world to me if you would like, subscribe, drop a comment below on some of your theories. I would love to hear them. And I look forward to seeing you on Weird Wednesdays from here on out. I hope that you have a spooky, ooky day. Bye, see you next time.